Hey guys, what's going on? It's Anthony with Ann Strone, and in today's video, we're gonna be addressing the top questions that you might have about the FAA's new remote ID for drones. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, so I went through the comment section on my last video and I went through the internet in general and I put together a list of nine questions that you guys had throughout you know, the whole internet and I'm gonna answer them here in this video. Okay guys, so starting with question number one, can you legally fly drones at night? The answer to that is yes, as long as you have the anti-collision lights on board and they have to be seen within three statute miles. So make sure you're getting the proper anti-collision lights for your drone. There are plenty of companies that sell these lights and you can order them online and you can put them on your drone when you're doing night flying. So keep that in mind. Question number two, can you fly over moving vehicles? Yes, you can fly over moving vehicles and no, you can't. So let me explain what I mean by yes and no. So yes, you can fly over them if you're crossing the roadway. So if you're on one side of the roadway and you have to get to the other side to take your drone shot, you can cross the roadway with the moving vehicles as long as you're just doing that. You may not fly along the roadway with traffic over the vehicles. You can't track vehicles anyway, unless you're in a sparsely populated area. Keep in mind, it's the same thing if you're, you know, if you're in the city or flying over a roadway, you cannot track cars and flying over the roadway would pose unnecessary risk. Before you couldn't fly over cars at all. There was like a blanket rule that just was like no flying over cars but now they've made it a little bit more clear as to what they mean. Question number three, can you fly your drone over people? Yes, you can now fly your drone over people, but the drone's propellers have to be guarded. They have to be covered. So you can't have the propellers open like on your DJI drone, you know, how the propellers are open like they are. You can't have that, you have to cover them because if the drone falls, the propellers can't cut skin. And then the other thing about flying over people that you need to know is the people that you're flying over have to be aware that a drone is flying over them. So they basically have to be aware of what you're doing. You can't unknowingly fly the drone over a person. All right, question number four. What do you do if your drone, like your FPV drone, doesn't have remote ID by the time the deadline is up? You know, a lot of people build custom FPVs and they wanna know, what do you do now? Um, so if you don't have remote ID on board your drone, by the time the deadline is up for you to have remote ID on your drone, then you cannot fly that drone anymore unless it's in an AMA field. So these are specific designated areas by the FAA. There's thousands of them throughout the United States. And that is where you're gonna have to fly your drone from now on if it doesn't have remote ID. The deadline is 2022, so you do have time, but just keep in mind that things are gonna change if your drone doesn't have remote ID. So we kind of just answered the next question, question number five, but the question is, when will you need to have remote ID on board your drone? Um, so to answer this more in depth, manufacturers will have 18 months. So they'll have 18 months to implement remote ID on board their drones, June, 2022. Individuals with custom drones will have an additional year to start complying. Now, I, I think that's what I read. So I believe maybe you'll have until 2023 potentially. Um, but let's just go with June 2022 for now because this was kind of like, I couldn't get a direct answer to that. So if you know, definitely let us know in the comments. Um, it sounded like you might have an additional year um, over what the manufacturer's deadline is. But for now, let's just go with June 2022. All right, now question number six. When will remote ID go into place? 60 days after it is entered in the FAA's registry. So that basically means 60 days from yesterday, I believe. Um, so around the end of February, beginning of March is when it is supposed to take over. Um, now again, like we just said in the other questions, you'll have deadlines, like DJI has deadlines to comply and you have deadlines to comply like we just went over. So obviously it won't fully go into place, but that is when it will officially go into place. All this legal stuff is so, you know how it is. It's kind of crazy, but 
that is what it is. That is what it said. Question number seven, what do you do about obtaining a part 107 if you've never had one before? And what is the deal with the recurrent test? So first of all, from what I've seen, there's no change when it comes to going to get your part 107. You still have to go to a testing center for that. But with the recurrent test, you can now take that online. So you're no longer forced to go in and actually sit down for the 40 question recurrent test. Now that's done at home online. And based off of what I've read, it's free. So they're no longer charging that $150 fee for the recurrent test. I'm not sure what the process is gonna be. Again, this all doesn't go into place until the 60 day mark. So we're gonna find out then probably what all these systems are. I'm sure they're in the final stages of developing this new law. Um, but we'll find out, I'm sure, what that process is gonna be. Question number eight, does remote ID work on a cellular network or does it broadcast its own signal? Based off of everything that I've found online, remote ID is gonna be its own broadcast signal. So you won't have to worry about cellular coverage because this was a big question that even I had. If it were to rely on cellular coverage, what would you do if you were in a situation where you had no cellular coverage? Would you not be able to fly your drone? Well, I guess you don't have to worry about that. It should have its own broadcast signal. Not sure what that's gonna be, if it's gonna work with GPS or what kind of signal it's gonna use. I don't really know that whole language of like signals and all that. I just like to fly my drone and you know use my drone for my jobs but i'm sure it'll be something reliable this was something that i actually remember writing in my letter to the faa um and i'm glad that they figured out a workaround to this all right and the last question question number nine the number one asked question of them all are there any changes to the visual line of sight rules this is interesting because with everything that's came out about this the last few days i can't find any definitive answer but I did find something that kind of hints to what the answer probably is. So let's let's talk about it. So I found this online and it kind of hints to what the answer might be. Um, and I'll read it to you. And if you catch it, then that's great. But I'll explain it to you anyway if you don't catch it in this paragraph. The final rule allows unmanned aerial systems without remote identification to be operated within an FAA recognized identification area. This option for meeting remote identification requirements has been included in the final rule as a long-term solution. AMA maintains nearly 2,400 fixed flying sites across the country where our members have flown safely and responsibly for decades. All unmanned aircraft at these locations are flown within visual line of sight of the operator, making it easy to ensure safety and identify the operator. The final rule also includes a sensible solution for operating outside of FAA recognized identification areas with the use of remote identification broadcast modules. This option eliminates the internet connectivity requirement that was included in the proposed rule and allows for retrofitting existing model aircraft. So basically what I'm getting from that is the reason why these the drones without remote ID have to fly there is because they don't have remote ID. And they specifically brought up that when they're in these AMA fields, you get a clear visual line of sight of the drone. So the operator can always see that drone when flying there, which leads me to believe that there's probably some type of relaxation on the rules with visual line of sight in this new law. I don't know this for sure, so don't take my word for it. I'm just coming up with an assumption because I can't find the answer. But to me, it sounds like remote ID is being implemented because you want to be able to track these drones that are not going to be within visual line of sight. Think about it. Amazon, um, United States Postal Service potentially, or UPS or FedEx, whatever companies are going to use drone technology to deliver packages um, are not going to be within visual line of sight of the operator at all. To me, I'm, I'm more on the side of, okay, we probably have a little bit of a relaxation on visual line of sight rules, but until we hear something definitive, definitely still keep that drone within visual line of sight until we are 100% on board with remote ID and we know exactly what the law is. You don't wanna get wrapped up in anything illegal. That is the best answer that I could come up with. Believe me, I tried to find the actual answer for you guys and even for myself because I'm really curious to know and I couldn't find it. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to make another video going over this because this is a big deal. This is a big change for the drone community. Um, hobbyists and commercial pilots 
Uh, my attitude has kind of shifted a little bit about remote ID. I'm a little bit more accepting of it now. Um, I've read a lot of different opinions that people have of remote ID that have kind of helped sway my opinion a little bit. And the fact that we can still fly our drones like we usually do, we just are gonna be tracked now. That's really a personal issue if you're upset with it, you know, it is what it is. It's out of our control at this point. This is what's going to happen, whether you like it or not. So it's a good thing in some people's eyes. It's a bad thing in other people's eyes. But anyway, guys, that's all for now. Once more information starts to become more clear, I'm definitely going to be bringing you guys updates on this. So definitely stay tuned to the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you're updated when I create new videos and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. That way it ranks higher in the algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.